Hey kids, Sarah Cray here with Let's Make Art and we are painting insects and today we are painting a butterfly. Ooh. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Great color and I just wanna say before we even get started that butterflies, there's so many different kinds and there's so many different colors. So really have fun with this. You don't have to use the same exact color I'm using. Maybe you go out, you see a butterfly in, in the wild in your yard, and you're like, I wanna paint those colors. So I just wanna give you guys permission to do that. Uh, we have Michael, who is our cameraman. <laughs> he gives us fun facts. He tells me what camera to look at. I like him. We are married and have a family. So do I even need to say that, you think? Oh yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's no. good that you guys know. Positive reinforcement. <laughs> Okay, so we are going to do this butterfly in three steps. The very first step is we are going to paint the color on our wings. Now you can see that there are different sections on these wings and I'm actually going to paint every other section to make sure that the colors stay within their section. And that way it doesn't turn into like craziness. Turn into goop. Goop. Step number two, we're gonna paint the body. And step number three, after our color is totally dry on our wings, we will do the detail lines with black. So that's it, one, two, three. Now before we start painting, I am going to have you say our oath. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. Thank you. And I like to start that way because I just want you guys to remember that it's about playing and it's not about being the best. Okay. How can anyone else be the best? Because you're the best. You're the best. You're the best. You stop it. You stop it. <laughs> okay. And also this, when I already talked about color, how you can make it your own. And that's another thing I want to talk about is like, Everybody has different favorite colors. Your favorite color is gonna be different from mine. Does that mean one of them is better? No, it, that just shows that we just have preferences and that is totally okay. So as, and it's the same thing with art, as you paint more and as you experience different styles, there you're gonna have a preference to what you like to use or styles that you like, things like that. And I just wanna say that it's okay for everybody to have different preferences. We should be accepting of all of them, right? I don't think one's better than the other. All right, now that I'm gonna stop yapping and start painting, let's, let's do this. So the colors that I'm mostly going to use are this kind of pinkish color here. What color is this? Let me clean it off. Would you like me to name it? Yeah, hold okay. on. I gotta oh. see it first. Yeah, let me clean off all the different, I'm just using water in my brush to kind of rub the top and then I'm gonna take my paper towel there we go. Oh, that's a nice pink. Fuchsia. Fuchsia. Great. I'm going to use this fuchsia color and then this color down here, this bluish, but the more purpley blue. What did we name that one? Midnight. Twilight. Twilight. I'm going to use twilight and fuchsia. Okay. And you can see here on my wings that I start off with twilight and then it ends in a fuchsia and there's like a blending period in between. So. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab some twilight, some of this darker blue. And I'm the gonna... one above it is just called blue, if you remember. <laughs> That's right. So <laughs> I have this twilight color. And then I'm gonna grab some fuchsia. And I'm gonna paint the edge fuchsia. So I'm leaving a white space in between. And then I'm gonna start working towards my twilight. And then when they meet, I'm going to start getting this really pretty purpley color. Now you want to make sure that you don't push all of this blue purpley color to the top because we want the very tip of our wing to stay that fuchsia color. Okay. And we're going to just repeat that on all of the sections of our wings. And again, I just want to say that these different sections, I'm gonna try and like skip every other one because we want the transitions to stay within the section. So I'm gonna skip and I'm gonna move on to this section. And I'm starting with my twilight, rinse my brush, grab some fuchsia, do fuchsia on my edge, 
and then work my way to my twilight. And then it's gonna start to meet and blend. Okay, next section, and just keep on doing that. Now, if you wanna do multiple layers to make sure that color is super vibrant, you absolutely can. You might just wanna wait for it to dry before you do another layer on top. But if you want that color to really um, be strong and powerful, you might wanna do a couple layers. Okay, again, starting with my Twilight. I just thought would be pretty is this would actually be really pretty if you just transferred transition from the dark blue to the light blue. Mm -hmm. That would be really pretty. You mean from twilight to blue? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then I have my fuchsia and then I'm going to blend in between. Okay. And just keep working your way. All right, you ready for some butterfly facts? I am. So, butterflies' life cycles are four parts. Okay. They are an egg, a larva, a pupa. Is that when they're in a cocoon? Uh-huh. Okay. And an adult. So when they're a larva, are they a caterpillar? Uh-huh. Oh, okay. Okay. They live anywhere from a week to a year. That's it? Uh-huh. In the adult phase. Oh, okay. So, yeah, not very that, long. A week to a year. That's a huge span. Yeah. Um, they have taste receptors on their feet. <laughs> so they can see if something's delicious when they land on it. That, what a different world our world would be if we had that same thing where our feet could have had taste buds on it. I would not be happy. I don't know if I want to be a part of that world. I mean, you'd get used to it. Just have your feet on the table all the time. What? <laughs> um, this is not from the same website, but I know that butterflies have a proboscis. It's like a little straw that they drink out of, attached and to their face. Attached to their face, like mosquitoes. Uh, no. No. I think, well, I don't know what a mosquito's little blood drinker is called, but I think proboscis is just for nectar. Oh, and nectar is the yummy juice from flowers. Mm -hmm. Flower sugar water. Flower sugar water. But those things you call mosquito hawks? Yes. They don't really eat mosquitoes. They also have a proboscis. Oh, that's what I was thinking of. Have you ever had a honeysuckle, like seen a honeysuckle flower and sucked the... Have you ever done that? Yeah. Is that... Essentially, the is that the nectar? Uh -huh. But they're able to get it from all the flowers, so I feel like it's only easy for us for the honeysuckle. Right. Okay, I did my sections on the one side. I'm gonna move to the other wing and do those sections, and then I'll come back to this one and do the rest of the sections, okay? And if you wanna switch yours upside down, you can. You can totally turn your painting this way and that to get whatever uh, angle you feel comfortable painting. Well, you're painting. The little town that we live in, Hamilton, is actually on a butterfly migration route. So they're building a butterfly park so that the butterflies can stop and land on some flowers and eat some food. They away. are? Yeah. Oh, that sounds amazing. Just a little rest stop for butterflies. So what, and maybe you don't know this, but what does a butterfly park entail? Like what qualifies as a butterfly park? Certain flowers yeah. or lots of flowers? Uh -huh. Okay, both. I didn't hear what the second part was. Um, certain flowers and lots of flowers. Oh, yeah. Okay. Anything yeah. else? Uh, I'm no. just curious. A, a, a great vibe. <laughs> they gotta have a great vibe. Too. They have to listen to a specific type of music. Uh, Grateful Dead only. <laughs> no, I feel like butterflies would listen to classical music. I don't know. I think they're metalheads. Yeah. Yeah, Metallica mostly. Classic rock, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Pat Benatar. Only Pat Benatar. Only, Benatar yeah, or the Indigo Girls. <laughs> now I'm just thinking about your mom. Yep, yeah.
some butterflies travel a long way. Like those monarch butterflies fly thousands of miles every year. Why do they migrate? Reach better temperatures. Oh, so it's like birds in the winter. Yeah. Kind of like that. I mean, I, I think butterflies don't live that long, so I think they migrate probably to lay eggs. I don't know much about monarch butterflies, but I'm sure someone out there does. Hmm. I wonder why. Watch salmon. I don't know anything about salmon. Oh, salmon live in the ocean because it's easy to eat and stuff. Uh huh. And then when they want to lay eigs, the ocean is too dangerous, so they uh -huh. swim way, way upstreams and lay their eggs in safe places. Oh, okay, so maybe butterflies do the same thing. Maybe, yeah. Well, kids, maybe you can find that out for us and let me know. Yeah. Why butterflies migrate? Is it all butterflies? No. No, just some. Maybe they're just restless spirits, you know? Maybe they just want to be free. Just want to fly. They just want to fly. That's all they want. To the same places on the same path. I can't believe there's not like a, there should absolutely be like a Pixar movie about a butterfly migration. I don't know. I, that's all I got so far. Maybe, maybe in this storyline, the butterfly main character doesn't want to follow the same migration path. And he comes across... A, he flies to Brooklyn. He comes across a moth <laughs> who feels the same way. Okay. And then okay. they have their own <laughs> migration does, wait, does adventure. Wait, does the moth not just want to migrate in general? No, the moth also does not... Wait, do moths migrate? I don't think I so. got to do more research before I make this movie. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to go back in and do the sections on the right hand side. Do you know what I think is really fun about um, people who make like movies, like animated movies, is a lot of the times they'll go to the locations and study like real life of what they're trying to recreate. Like I know that for Ratatouille, the animators, they were sent to France and they needed to go through like really fancy fresh French restaurants so they can get the feel and the sound and what it looks like. What? And that was your inspiration for being an artist. And, and that, that is all I want to do. <laughs> hopefully one day your work will send you on a work trip to France to try the food. Yes. But, and then they also, so not only did they go through and look at fancy fresh French restaurants, but they also had to walk through sewers because the movie was about like rats and there was a sewer scene. So they needed to go and walk through the sewers of France to get the feeling right. And I just think that's so interesting. And so like if butterflies are something that you really love to paint or insects and bugs, you know, like a really fun thing to do would be to go out and look at them and try and see them in person or see where they are and um, that kind of stuff. I know that that's what animators do and I think that that is so cool. Going on with your theory about why I became an artist, I actually used to want to be a food critic because I'm like, you're telling me that my job would be going to restaurants and getting free food and then just saying if I like it or not? And I was like, yes, please. I'll do that. <laughs> but you actually have to have a lot of experience as a chef. Now you just critique my food at home. <laughs> now I do that, but More just salt, at home. Michael. <laughs> okay. We're almost done with one of the wings. Okay, now we're finishing up on our wings here and 
You might be looking at it and thinking that this is looking a little bit rough, but one thing I want to tell you is it's not fair to judge a painting when you're only halfway through it. So I just want you to say be patient. And when we put in the black linings in between the sections, it's really going to make it feel nice and clean and like tight. Does that make sense? So I'm just saying don't give up now. And that's a really a big reason why a lot of people feel like they're maybe not good at art is because they get halfway through a painting and they're like, oh, this looks bad. I'm not good at this. I'm going to stop. But let me tell you, as someone who paints many things every single day, nothing looks good halfway through. You have to wait till the very end. You have to give it a chance before you can make a judgment on it. Okay, we're going to move on to step two. We're going to do the body, which is just going to be black. So I'm going to take my black and I'm going to just kind of follow the lines, like the stripes here that I have on the bottom. And I'm going to paint in the body, leaving the little white spaces for eyes. Are those their eyes, actually? I don't know. Maybe they're just little dots, but I assumed they were the eyes. I could be wrong. You are the creator. That's true. With their eyes, then. I can do whatever I want. And I am going to leave a little bit of white on this back part just for glare on the body. I'm going to lift up a little bit of paint on the middle of the body to make it a lighter value. And for the antennas, again, if you need to use a pen because it's really hard to get a point with this with this brush and get a thin line. Nothing wrong with that. But I'm just very light pressure, barely touching my paintbrush to my paper, getting these antenna lines in. And then the little dots, like so. And if your wings are dry, you can start doing your detail lines. Now, I have a little black marker here that I just want to show you might be easier to use. So I have my black marker and I'm just going to follow my outline. So in terms of getting like an even line, this might be a little bit easier to use for you than the paintbrush. But if you want to, whatever you want to use, it's going to be okay. But I just want to let you know that it's okay to use other things sometimes if they're a little bit easier. And maybe you painted over your section so much that you kind of lost where your lines are. Hopefully, you'll since we painted it by sections, you can tell where your lines are. But if you can't, like that one I couldn't totally tell, just guess. Just eyeball it. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be exactly like mine. And I feel like there's so many different kinds of butterflies with different... Um, patterns on them that it's okay. It's okay if it's different from this one. Somewhere out there. There's a butterfly that looks like that. Somewhere out there, there's a butterfly that will have different patterns than this one. And try and fill in. You can see that I left some white spaces where the wings meet the body. I'm just putting black in there. And this part is still a little bit wet, so I'm just going to be careful. There we go. Yeah, see? So look at the right wing and look at the left wing. Look how much a difference putting those black sections in make of making it feel complete. So again, please do not give up if you've only done the section-y part. Wait till you get to this last part. Okay, that's it for our butterfly. Good job. I cannot wait to see what you have come up with or how you made this yours. Remember, you can add backgrounds, you can add fun little things. It can be flying in the sky, maybe a blue background or clouds. Um, if you want to share it with us and with the help of a parent, you can put it on Instagram at Let's Go Make Art or hashtag Let's Make Art. You can also share it on Facebook. And if you need any of these supplies, you can get them at letsmakeart.com. Bye, you guys. <laughs>